one of the updates that come with the Zcam E2 F6 Pro that I forgot to mention, along with every other uh, Z camera that comes in its lineup, is the fact that in a firmware update, you will now be able to record externally to a Blackmagic Video Assist and record to Blackmagic RAW. Some more information has seems to come out, and today I want to talk to you guys about why I'm not necessarily excited or have any interest in recording Blackmagic RAW externally, but I also want to explain why this is a major deal for Zcam. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry. So if this is content that you like, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth. As mentioned in the introduction video, Zcam has announced that they will be allowing in a future firmware update along with their new camera, the Zcam E2 F6 Pro and their previous uh, Zcam video cameras they are going to be releasing a new firmware update that will allow the z cam cameras to record black magic raw externally to a black magic video sys 12g uh, which many people around the world are super excited for what it would mean the fact that you can now have a raw codec that can go out that is usable in something that is robust as DaVinci Resolve. I'm here to sort of talk about sort of my thoughts about that, about the Blackmagic RAW uh, update in general, but as well as what it actually means and what I think is the bigger thing that no one is really talking about. So the first thing I wanna say is, it's good that we're gonna get new ways of recording. Um, they And it looks like they may also offer a new way of Doing it, they. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught the Cine D interview uh, with the owner of Zcam. Uh, he did a little tease about, and it looks like it has something to do with the SSDs. Again, this is all speculation, rumors. Nothing has been announced. Nothing is official in that regard. Uh, but the Black Magic Raw stuff is actually real, and I think it's for people that have been wanting a way to get a raw codec workflow into DaVinci Resolve with something as powerful as the Zcam. I think this is a great thing. However, there's still a lot of unanswered questions that give me cause to pause and sort of personally hinder my expectation. The first thing is that based on the information that at least I'm gathering through the information that is dropped at B&H, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but it appears that the raw output will only be 4K and it will be 4K up to 60 frames per second. There's a couple issues with that, and maybe people that are in the Zcam community that have experience with the ProRes RAW capabilities could give a better light enlightenment to this. But there's a couple things. Number one is the fact that since it's a RAW codec, and it's not any sort of RAW codec or any sort of quad bayer sensor that allows you to scale down, RAW is, for the most part, a one-to-one -one pixel readout which would mean that in order to actually shoot raw externally the z cams are going to all have to do it in a crop you won't necessarily be able to shoot full frame in this sort of environment with black magic raw now again if you are someone who is familiar with the prores raw workflow maybe you can give some alignment of how that works but again this is also based on how black magic will ingest it and it also kind of makes sense in this regard because the information is given out that the HDMI port is the same as the one on the previous cameras, which is an HDMI 2.0. It's not an HDMI 2.1, which would give you the capabilities of outputting as high as 8K recording. And then when you go to the SDI side of it, it is 12G, which I'm super happy. It was one of the things that I was really excited about in my original talk about the Zcam F6 Pro, which I'll leave up here so you guys can check it out. And I'll also leave a link down in the description. But of course, if you know 12G, 12G SDIs, they cap out at 4K60, um, unless you go through some sort of processor or hardware system that takes in multiple sensors and multiple information to allow you to get 8K recording. But that workflow is not something that is typically with the ordinary filmmaker. Shout out to you, Simon. My concern is that 
one, I'm not going to be able to fully utilize the capabilities of the camera externally uh, via RAW simply because the outputs are not powerful enough or won't send a process uh, data that can handle the higher resolutions such as 6K open gate or even 6K 16 by 9. Again, this is all wait and see, but that's at least what BNH is showing right now that you can only shoot DCI 4K, which means you're going to shoot on a Super 35 crop. The other thing that is also mentioning on BNH is that it is a 10 bit uh, raw codec, which to me sort of does kind of limits what I think what I would typically use because most raw is 12 bit raw. Even the Z raw that's capable in the camera right now can shoot 12 bit raw. So even though this is a more accessible raw, the fact that it is 10 bit really hinders and really sort of doesn't make it appealing for me. Also given the fact that you now have to have a specific monitor, in this case, a Blackmagic video assist. Now, obviously if you have a video assist already or you're willing to go with it, then hey, that's okay. But at least for right now with the information that is coming out until there's more clarity, it looks like the maximum capability will be 10 bit 4K 60. And then my final reason, and it's more of a personal reason, and it's just a standard that I have, is, which is, it's basically a principle that I have, which is I do not record my main delivery codec externally. And that is just my experience coming from broadcast and audiovisual, is that I do not add more potential point of failures to the signal chain. And recording externally is the definition of adding points of failure. Now, if it's not the main source, like I'm still recording internally and the Blackmagic RAW is sort of just a backup, I have no problem with that. As long as it's not the only source of my capabilities, which is why I've also been staunchly against going through Type-C ports and connecting to SSDs. I know SSDs are much uh, more affordable, but affordability does not, to me, outweigh the potential loss of thousands of dollars because you because you lost footage for a client. But that's all of my thoughts on the Blackmagic RAW itself. Now let's get to why I personally think this is such a game-changing and important update for the Zcam and Zcam community. Number one, this is a two-way street. So yes, Zcam is now supporting Blackmagic RAW, but the reverse is also the case, which, which is the fact that in order for Blackmagic RAW to work, Blackmagic Design has to now support Zcam, which means they also have to support Zcam's Gamma Curve, their Zlog2, and their uh, Color Science, which means because of this, whenever this firmware update, and I expect this to be updated in DaVinci Resolve as well, even if you don't shoot Blackmagic RAW, if you shoot something like ProRes or the H.265 files, you will now have Zlog, potentially Zlog 2, built right in natively into DaVinci Resolve, which means now all the Zcam people no longer have to build this entire workflow or get, uh, create this whole new pipeline with either third-party plugins or looking for people that, may, uh, that have LUTs or plugins to work with Asus. You don't have to do that anymore. DaVinci will do that and make it work right into the software itself. So that's the thing that to me is very game changing because this now opens the Z cams into a much more accessible and easier workflow, which I'm more excited about. The other, and this is less guaranteed, that really gets me excited and potentially gets me excited is the fact that if Blackmagic RAW is going to be supporting the Zcam and the Zcam uh, Gamma and Color Science, it also means that they have to also support the metadata that is coming from these cameras, which could signal that Z RAW that is natively in these cameras as well could potentially get, be finally supported in DaVinci Resolve where you can just 
work with Z-Raw natively inside DaVinci Resolve. Now, this is not necessarily truly guaranteed because there's a lot more to do with how the files will work, what's the wrapper. I do believe Z-Raw uh, Z is sort of based on Cinema DNG. I could be wrong, but that is sort of my take, which means like, again, this is the potential, my speculation, what I'm, it's like, now you can record Z-Raw internally and just work that way. And hopefully, you know, without too much lagging or any, you know, setbacks in terms of that. But if all of these come true where you could just record H.265 or ProRes or even H.264, you record Z-Log2 just with the process uh, files, but then you can work with natively using like color space transform and everything in DaVinci Resolve as well as getting able to use Z-Raw in the raw, the camera raw tab in the color section. That to me takes the value of Z-Cam up an entire notch. Cause now, especially with the announcement of the Z-Cam Pro with all of its professional features that is coming, Z-Cam has really now positioned themselves to be a real, truly competitor in this space of accessible cinema cameras and it could even put itself in the likes of Sony and Canon and even Red for the simple fact that the mounts, one, it has a mount system that's interchangeable. You can go EF, you can go PL, and you don't have to use adapters. You can, and you can do like an M. And then there's even third party people like um, Viltrox that has an E mount, an electronic E mount um, that you can basically built and screw on to the camera, and you can use that as well. This camera has potential endless possibilities, and then there's a lot more that you could do with. So I am super excited about this camera. I will be honest, up until like all these announcements about the, uh, surrounding Z-Cam, I wasn't really, it wasn't really on my radar. But now that I have seen what is coming, and seeing what they're now doing and the changes that are made to really ease the workflow, which was my main hindrance for Zcam in the first place. I'm actually like right now thinking maybe, I, cause I was looking at the Komodo, I was looking at uh, Canon for some upgrades, um, maybe even Sony. I might actually be pushing all that aside now and saying, maybe I should just go ahead and get the new Zcam F6 Pro because it answers almost everything that I wanted. So I have a lot to think about. Anyways, that's it for me guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I would like to know what are your thoughts on Zcam now offering Blackmagic RAW to their cameras? Let me know, leave your comments below. And as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care everyone.